For the degree of Bachelor of Science, I present Javon Douglas. Jones. Before we get into the news, please remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and to share the news with someone today. Now on to the news. Assistant Funeral Director shot and killed in Portmore. A man was fatally shot in a section of Gregory Park on Sunday evening as a town hall meeting was underway about the crime and violence in the Portmore St. Catherine community. The deceased has been identified as 28-year-old Javon Lawrence, an assistant funeral home director and a resident of Watson Grove, Portmore. Lawrence was attacked at about 7.30 p.m. on Orion Drive in Watson Grove. It's reported that he took some children to purchase ice cream when he was shot multiple times. The children were not physically harmed. In an interview following the town hall meeting at the nearby Baptist Road, commanding officer for the St. Catherine South Division, Superintendent Michael Campbell, said Gregory Park has recorded 16 murders since January. Unfortunately, we are seeing at, um, three, an increase of three, right? when compared to the same period for last year. But general um, crime for Gregory Park has been down. And we have been having a lull since we have increased our policing strategy in the zone, for example, with the police post. So we continue to push, we continue our operational activities, and working with the community, we're expecting continuous successes in this zone. Sunday's murder was not included in the statistics provided by Superintendent Campbell. A police post was set up in Gregory Park last month to announce safety and security. Two guns and imitation pistols seized at a park camp, soldier charge. A member of the Jamaica Defense Force JDF has been charged after a vehicle being driven by the soldier was searched at the JDF cannonball gate at a park camp and the several weapons and ammunition were found. Reports received are that on Sunday at about 7.56 p.m., the motor vehicle stopped at the force's cannonball gate and a search was requested by other members of the JDF. The suspect was then asked to open the trunk and one jade of Eastwood Bergen kit bag was taken from the vehicle and searched, revealing a black browning 9mm pistol with a magazine containing one 9mm round, a blacksmith on Western Farm containing a magazine with five 9mm cartridges, a black toy imitation pistol, two Glock magazines, one containing 24 9mm cartridges, and the other 25 9mm cartridges, 17 5.56 blank rounds, and six 5.56 live rounds. The JDF officers also found a taser gun, a binoculars, a laser flashlight with charger, two black infrared laser with two attachments, a combat knife, a pistol holster, a handcuff with key, a rifle scope, pistol sight containing 10 Allen key with screw, a pepper spray, a red dot optic sight, a pair of gloves, and six used plastic gloves. The individual was detained and has since been charged with possession of prohibited weapon and unauthorized possession of ammunition. Man fatally shot by licensed fire molder in Spanish Town. The St. Catherine North Police are investigating the fatal shooting of a man who allegedly attacked another with a licensed fire molder. That is some George Winston George Garrick of Inswood in Spanish Town. Reports are that at about 10 a.m. on Saturday, the complainant went to a house which he owns in the Inswood housing scheme. Upon arrival, it was reportedly observed that the locks of the premises were tampered with and that a door was ajar. He entered the house and Garrick attacked the 66-year-old complainant and told him to leave the premises. The complainant then explained that he owned the house and asked Garrick to leave. The complainant was then reportedly hit with a broom on his left hand. Garrick then reportedly advanced in a menacing way with a knife and the complainant drew his nice and Glock pistol and fired, hitting Garrick. He subsequently summoned the police and reported the incident. Garrick was pronounced dead at the Spanish Town Hospital. The complainant's licensed firearm was seized by the police. The Spanish Town Criminal Investigation Branch is probing the incident. Everybody I go cry, mother warned. 
Following shooting which left three dead, upset that seven years of relative calm have been broken with Saturday night's mass shooting incident, which left three people dead on Bowen Road, Kingston 11, residents say they no longer have an interest in maintaining efforts at keeping the peace with their Crescent Road neighbours. The residents of the St. Andrew community are further incensed by posts on social media, reportedly by men from Crescent Road, in which individuals are seen boasting that the men from Bowen Road had to run. At three people dead and five people in the hospital, what do you think are going to happen? You think the community really going to sit down and take it? One resident said, as he sat along the roadway with other community members. Two of those killed have been identified as Kingston 13 residents, Kemar Hardware, 35, the son of well-known singer singing melody and a bar owner of Stephen Lane, and the Stephen Myers, 19, of Harvey Road. The third person who lost his life has been identified as 63-year-old Ricardo Baker. Official reports from the police are that at about 11.40 p.m., the men were among a group of persons on the roadway when armed men travelling on foot opened gunfire at the group, hitting all eight people before escaping. The injured persons were taken to the hospital where the three men were pronounced dead. The other injured persons were admitted. According to residents, the culprits, who they have identified as men from Crescent Road, entered the community after jumping a wall by the cemetery. The residents claimed that the men were armed with rifles and chased, shot and killed the victims. Two pairs of crocs and a single sandal, which were scattered along the roadway near the blood-stained area where the men fell, were evidence of the vicious attack that had unfolded. Ardra's mother, who broke down in tears as she spoke to the media, said her son was a peacemaker and did not deserve to die in such a manner. He's a nice youth. Him all is a try for cry peace. Him not in the problem with nobody, she said, noting that he had recently opened his bar in the community where the injured men had collapsed. The woman said her son had been shot three times before, including twice in the community, but was always focused on maintaining peace. However, she, like other residents, does not want her son's death and those of the others to go unpunished. Them kill me pity for nothing at all. Them kill me pity and in now go down. I know them I put up on phone, them I put up about them after run, but them better try put up because them after go run too. I know me alone I go cry. I know the parents were for them pity dead alone I go cry. Everybody I go cry, she warned. According to residents, the harmonious relationship that the two communities had been enjoying crumbled in July when a series of attacks, reportedly orchestrated by men from Crescent Road, began. Also triggered those attacks. One resident said, It's a girl. She tell her man the done that will stop her from coming round here. And him said attacks that him no one, no man from round here come round there. The man said a male resident went to the community and was told to leave, and since then there have been multiple shootings. However, the residents claim that Bowen Road residents were focused on trying to keep the peace. So to them know the man them now pre no war. Enough man bury them gun. Them come attack the man them, a resident said. On Sunday, a large contingent of police was observed coming through the community, but the lawmen were met with clears and unpleasant reactions from the residents. In the meantime, hours after the shooting incident, Pastor Lennox Robinson, along this flock from the Glad Tidings Church of God of the Firstborn, gathered in front of Hardware's bar, singing and praying. The minister said he and his members were going to do a walk through the communities to pray with the residents and offer them support. We just want to bear with them and pray that God will seal up the communities so that they do not break out in any further bloodbath, Robinson said. Holness accuses PMP of attempting to normalize criminality. Prime Minister Andrew Holness is accusing the opposition People's National Party of attempting to normalize criminality in the Jamaican society, referencing the PMP's decision to oppose the extended use of states of emergency in recent years, the Jamaica Labour Party leader placed blame at the opposition's feet for the runaway crime rate. He said the PMP has been complicit with crime and has embraced criminals for political gain. Holness accused the PMP of working to undo years of ethics and law and order in the country. But now we see a certain type of crime emerging. A kind of crime that I can only say, boy, this look like PMPism. It just look like PMPism, and it's not me say so. Is them come out and defend it? Them see certain crimes going on in this community. We, as a government, will never give any form of protection, soccer coverage to any criminality, criminal or criminal behavior, because that is the difference between us and them. They are not like us. The breakdown in respect between citizens and the police did not happen 
overnight. It happened as a result of the introduction of PMPism into the culture of Jamaica. A breakdown of all systems, values, and respect for authority and institutions. That is PNPism. It is not going to be corrected overnight. The JLP leader was speaking at a Manchester Central Constituency meeting at Manchester High School on Sunday night. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment, and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.